uh, hope you're well. Hope you're staying safe. Uh, hope you're of good spirits. Welcome to the conclusive part of uh, chapter number 28, securing your computer systems. And obviously in today's session, like we had mentioned before, we're going to be looking at uh, uh, just uh, dealing with malware, identifying some of uh, the recovery mechanisms that you can put in place, and then uh, just discussing uh, on a superficial note what is happening as far as firewalls are concerned. So the, the very important um, the thing that you need to take into consideration, especially when you're looking at dealing with, 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 with malware, is the kind of mechanisms you can put in place to safeguard or combat infection as far as, as uh, your computer systems would go. And a typical example of that would be an antivirus program or package. Now, the term antivirus is becoming a bit uh, antiquated. Why? Because uh, remember, a virus is just a part uh, or a small part of malware. So ultimately, uh, the most uh, um, appropriate term would be anti-malware programs or packages uh, that obviously are, are then designed or created specifically to safeguard our systems from infection as far as malware is concerned. And it normally functions in a, in a, in a, in a, in a twofold uh, uh, platform. Um, obviously, the first one is to search and destroy, which means that it, it scans your system for any uh, infected uh, uh, files or for any infection generically. And then after finding that, it either uh, quarantines, uh, disinfects or uh, typically uh, uh, destroys or deletes. And then uh, the second one now is looking at acting as a virus uh, um, or a malware shield where it only activates when a certain set of conditions have been met. So arguably maybe downloading a file of the net or installing a program uh, or transferring uh, uh, files from a specific external um, uh, storage platform or storage uh, uh, component. Now, it's important to identify now the traits um, in terms of, of how this particular anti-malware package should function. And you've got two distinctive traits uh, that are out there. Uh, in terms of how these particular uh, uh, viruses or malwares function. And the first one is uh, the polymorphic uh, virus or polymorphic malware. And this particular type of, of malware changes its digital signature regularly. And the reason why it does that is to try and avoid detection. So think of it as a shape-shifting type of malware. It makes it quite difficult. And Normally, what, what anti-malware packages uh, 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 do to try and uh, uh, avoid this uh, uh, polymorphism is using some kind of algorithm that then, or a checksum that then is, is, is attached or that is associated with any uh, and every specific file that is stored in the system. If that particular checksum is not the same when a scan is run, then automatically uh, that's a, a typical indication that that particular system or file might be infected by a distinctive virus. And uh, the second one is the stealth virus. And this one is quite detrimental. Why? Because it it's affects boot files. So it's a boot sector virus. And it's, it's quite uh, 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 tricky in terms of, of functionality there. So again, later day um, anti-malware packages have uh, uh, incorporated mechanisms that can identify uh, uh, sometimes during boot time. But in, more, in most instances, I think what's, what's, what's relevant, should you find yourselves in environments where probably your machine is not booting appropriately and uh, 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 is pointing toward uh, the whole concept of a malware having infected your system, the um, complete uh, a reinstall of your system would be sometimes the best way to go about it. So uh, uh, technically what we're saying is running a clean install of your operating system. So completely wiping out your uh, distinctive hard drive and then uh, a reinstalling uh, both your uh, operating system as well as your application uh, packages in that distinctive vein there. So having said that, uh, understanding uh, the different malware prevention tips is also imperative and important, especially now when you're looking at it from an exam or assessment perspective. And you've got seven distinctive recovery uh, 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 steps that you need to take cognizance of, especially when you're dealing with an infected system. And uh, again, like I've always said uh, uh, um, in a couple of our sessions, try and avoid cramming. 
but understand rather the whole concept of it and how some of these steps or stages are interrelated so that at least uh, it doesn't escape you when you're uh, asked of it and as far as the actual uh, exam or assessment is concerned. So the first one is to identify uh, the actual system uh, symptoms associated with your um, uh, particular malware. And remember, your, your, your symptoms are, th there's a vast or well, there's a, a, a myriad of, 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 of symptoms that are out there that point to malware infection. And I think what is important in this particular instance is to I, I identify that as long as your computer system is, is, is not functioning the way it's supposed to, that is typically an indication that malware could have infected your system. So your system being slow as an argument or certain programs not functioning appropriately, either not uh, starting up or if they do start up, they function for a couple of sec seconds rather and then they close. And then you could find maybe problems with booting. Uh, uh, the list will go on and on as far as, as, as uh, uh, configurations will go. Some might even want to argue that responses to unsolicited, unsolicited mail is also an example of uh, an infected uh, system there. So as long as your system is not functioning the way it's supposed to. Sometimes it's an indication that it's been uh, infected by uh, a malware there. So that's the first uh, stage. The second one that you want to look at now is after having identified that quarantine that infected system. So remove it from the network or bar access uh, as far as uh, uh, um, usage is concerned. So because you want to avoid a scenario where someone plugs in an external to try and uh, um, uh, probably uh, transfer files uh, dependent or access uh, 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 or download content of it depending on uh, uh, environments there. So you quarantine, so you remove it from the network. After quarantine, which is the uh, second one, the third one that you want to look at now is to disable system restore, especially if you're working with uh, Windows based systems, because you want to avoid a scenario where you go back uh, uh, to a restore point where your particular uh, machine was infected. And then after uh, disabling system restore, you now need to look at remediation, which is the fourth one. And there's a two, uh, uh, the two uh, steps as far as uh, remediate uh, uh, or re remediation is concerned. And those two steps would include uh, your scanning and your updates. So you scan, uh, uh, or, or arguably if you want to look at it uh, in, a, in a chronological order, you uh, are running your, your antiviral updates or anti-malware updates first. And then after running the update, you're then looking at uh, uh, scanning for uh, uh, infection or further infection dependent. And then uh, after you've done that, uh, the uh, fifth one that you want to look at now is to schedule uh, regular scans and regular updates. Normally, you want to update uh, probably once every other two days. But if you want to be uh, uh, very uh, pedantic about it, just make sure that you uh, run your updates on a regular basis in terms of a daily uh, uh, basis just to avoid uh, uh, um, uh, infection. So to make your systems more robust in terms of trying to circumvent uh, malware infection, run these updates on a, on, a, on a daily basis. And then after that is done, you then want to uh, enable uh, system restore now so that uh, if you've disinfected the system, you can always uh, create or go back to that restore point where the system has been functioning appropriately. And then the last one uh, uh, that you want to look at now is uh, end user education. So just making sure that whoever is going to be using the system or whoever is using the systems uh, um, uh, conduct themselves in an appropriate fashion in terms of uh, being able to identify certain suspicious uh, behavior, being able to um, maybe scan uh, the externals uh, or any storage platform before plugging into the system or uh, when it's plugged into the system. And uh, maybe just uh, avoid uh, downloading content from suspicious sites um, or obviously that unsolicited mail we were talking about earlier on in terms of spam. Just uh, avoid uh, opening or clicking any links found within uh, uh, that particular mail. So just g g generic uh, um, uh, uh, schooling in terms of uh, how they need to, to, to conduct themselves in those networked environments just to uh, avoid um, uh, systems being uh, uh, infected there. So uh, again, uh, um, just maybe <laughs> sounding like a broken record now, but making sure that you, 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 you avoid downloading uh, um, any uh, content of uh, uh, these suspicious sites, whether it's a game, whether it's a file, whether it's a it's, it's a program, it all it all depends. 
So that's that in terms of identifying uh, uh, these tips. I think uh, the, the the other relevant section now is identifying firewalls or what what are they and uh, how they function. So ultimately, if you look at it from a, a basic perspective, a firewall is a, a software or hardware device that has been designed specifically to protect an internal network um, from unauthorized access, and ultimately, this unauthorized access is from the net. So it's, it's not just barring access from the internet, but it's also barring access to the internet, uh, uh, dependent on uh, configurations there. And ultimately, I think the best type of firewall that you can find is a combination of both software and hardware based uh, uh, um, uh, configurations there or architectures. And I think for, 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 for your um, added research, I'd want you to look at how these firewalls function and what are the different architectures uh, that these firewalls use in terms of uh, 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 protecting internal systems and then or internal networks. And then uh, the other thing that I would also want you to look at is identifying encryption. How does it function uh, uh, within this particular in, in, uh, uh, instance? How does encryption function? Obviously, how does it also uh, assist in the whole concept of protection of uh, uh, stored uh, content as far as your machines are concerned? So that uh, concludes uh, chapter number 28. Uh, like I'd said in our previous uh, uh, clip there, we're now going to be delving into uh, learning unit number three. And if you've looked at the pacer, we, we, I think um, chapter number 11 uh, discusses the whole concept of, of uh, removable media as well as input and output devices. So that one is covered. I think the most uh, um, um, important uh, part of that learning unit is going to be your printers, which remember is the last question of, of your assignment. So printers is going to be chapter number 27. That's the next chapter that we're going to be uh, looking at. And hopefully I'll upload uh, your sessions uh, towards the conclusion of this week. And then uh, if there are any uh, particular questions, please, as usual, uh, pop me a mail and uh, I'll engage you accordingly as far as uh, your module content there is concerned. So that's that, guys. Uh, uh, thanks for uh, uh, joining in. As uh, usual, please stay safe, uh, um, uh, stay positive, and uh, keep smiling. See you in the uh, next clip. Cheers.